So I was telling you the story about my grandson, Lucas, who in 2013 was born, diagnosed with a condition called Williams syndrome. In 2015, end of 2014, he was diagnosed with having a, a Chiari malformation, which is where the brain and the, and the skull um, are malformed. And so it actually pushes against it. And the doctor said, we need to do surgery right away. However, we can't do surgery just yet because he had, Lucas had this heart condition that would have prevented him from going under anesthesia. And so they said, we're just gonna have to wait and hope for the best. And of course, then he had to tell them the worst. That's what doctors have to do sometimes. And so they began to explain that um, that a lot of things that could could uh, go uh, go wrong. You know that he could die. He could he could be disabled permanently. That he could lose the use of an arm or a leg. Uh, on and on, all the these bad diagnoses. Well, several months went by, and one morning I was in my office, and it was actually I think right at the beginning of January of 2015. And as I was walking back and forth in my office, I was studying in the book of Esther and the story of Esther. And um, I'm reading all of these things that you guys are decreeing to turn around. That's awesome. Um, but as, as um, I was walking back and forth in my office, I heard the Lord say, it is a time for divine reversals divine reversals. Do you remember this Apostle Brent? I preached it down in Trinidad. I think the last time I was in Trinidad, 2015, or maybe I've been there since then, but I preached it, I'm pretty sure, in Trinidad. But the Lord said, it's a time for divine reversals. And of course, I was studying in the book of Esther where um, the evil, wicked man, Haman, and remember his name is Haman, not Haman, okay, because that's my name, okay? <laughs> um, but he um, he had a... Um, written a decree of death and destruction against the Jewish people. And Esther went before the king. Remember the story? She went before the king. He extended his scepter of favor. And he said to her, he said, ask whatever you want, Esther. And she said, listen, we've got this situation where there's this decree of death and destruction that's been written against um, against God, against God's people, against my people. They're all to be exterminated on such and such. He said, you yourself write a new decree. You yourself write a new decree. Write it in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring because whatever the king has sealed with his ring cannot be reversed. Wow. And so Esther and Mordecai got together and they wrote a decree and it says in Esther chapter 9 verse 1, it says, on the very day that the enemy of the Jews hoped to have power over them, the reverse occurred. And instead, God's people had power over them that hated them. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Come on. That had power, over, God caused a complete reversal. And then God brought deliverance from their enemy. And the rest of chapter nine of Esther is all about Purim where they celebrate reversal. It's literally called the holiday of reversals. And so I was just looking through this book today at Declarations for Breakthrough, and I have a whole chapter in here about, de about the, the breakthrough of divine reversals and how the Lord spoke that to me that morning. Well, I was excited. I was thrilled that the Lord had given me this word. Um, I, Apostle Tom and I just started speaking to some things. Well, we didn't even really know at that point that we needed a miracle for our grandson, Lucas, because that morning... When he woke up, he was um, just two years old at that point. Um, he actually lost the use of his left leg. So this, that morning when he woke up, he lost the use of his left leg. And remember what the doctor said. They, they said to his mom and dad, this could be one of the conditions that happens as a result of this, this brain and the skull pushing together and the compression. And when they called the doctor, the doctor actually said to him, listen, I'm sorry, but there's nothing that I can do. I hate to tell you this, but they said that to my son, they said, this condition is irreversible, irreversible. So the doctor's telling them irreversible at the same time that God is telling me it's time for divine reversals. I'm telling you, God went before us and gave us a prophetic word. And so when my son called me, of course, he was very distressed. And I said, bring Lucas over here. We've got a prophetic word. We're going to war with this word. And we laid hands on Lucas. And we began to decree over him. And we decreed a divine reversal over him. Now, I want you to know something. 
He had lost the use of his left leg. He couldn't walk. He couldn't crawl. He, he could, he could, he could, it, it was very, very distressing for everybody. But God gave me the word divine reversal before we ever knew we needed a reversal in our own family. And so he, so we prayed for him and I want you to know what happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> the first day that we prayed for him, nothing happened. The second day, he got worse. Sometimes we get really discouraged and we get out of faith when things get worse. But the third day, and we, we could preach a whole message on the third day, but on the third day, Lucas jumped out of bed that morning, started running around the house, and he was completely healed. Divine reversal. Come on, guys. Just that easy. God reached down. God touched him by his word, agreeing with the word of the Lord, agreeing with the divine reversal. The same way that God did that for Lucas, he can do it for you. A couple of weeks later, we were in a conference and the Lord had me start just decreeing reversal to physical situations, reversal to, to skin disease, reversal to cancers, reversal to situations in the eye. And at that time, uh, one of our staff members, one of our young prophets, Rebecca Francis, was actually dealing with something that I don't know that we really even realized it, but the doctor had said that she had an um, unusually high pressure in her eye, and she was actually in a situation where she was losing vision every single day. Every single day. David Dorado, I, hear, I see you on here. I want you to hear this. She was losing vision every single day. And I got up in a service and I just began to release this word about divine reversal. Keep writing there. What is it that you want to see reversed? Because I'm reading it. I can't stop and read them all out loud, but but I'm, I'm reading them and I'm agreeing with you for divine reversal. So I just released this prophetic word. She was actually back working in the video room. And I don't think that she even heard the word brought forth, but somebody else came and said, listen, <laughs> listen, that word just came about a healing in the eyes, a divine reversal for the eyes. And she grabbed hold of it. And that afternoon, she actually had an eye, eye doctor appointment already on the schedule. And she didn't necessarily even really notice anything different. But by that afternoon, when she went into the doctor, the doctor tested her, then tested her again, then tested her again. And he said, I don't know what's happened, but your eyesight has been restored. Come on, guys, divine reversal. That year, we started seeing prodigals come home. We saw people on the verge of bankruptcy have major turnarounds financially. We saw marriages healed. We saw phenomenal miracles happen with prodigal children, the miracle power of God. And so I want to encourage you tonight that there is a miracle for you, that God has divine reversals for you and just as I'm sharing this tonight, I want you to engage your faith. We're going to take communion together. And as we take communion together, we are, we are calling on the blood of Jesus, the power of Jesus' name, the anointing of God to begin to be released to bring you divine reversal. Healing in your heart, healing in your mind, healing in your family, financial breakthrough, turn around for your family members, turn around for the prodigals, turn around for the situations. I'm telling you, we are living in that time. We've got to begin to release our faith. I don't care if you've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. There comes a time where God says, now is the time. I want you to type down there in the comment section, just say, now is the time. As we're getting ready to engage in this time of taking communion, just say, now is the time. Jesus, we thank you that you died on the cross to save us from our sin, to forgive us from our weakness, Lord, to heal us of our, of our doubt and our unbelief, to heal us, Father God, for that place where we broke in covenant with you. But tonight as we take communion, Lord, we decree that we are in covenant with you and we're decreeing divine reversal into our situation. Divine reversal, Lord, now is the time. Now is the time to see things turn around in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that even as Jesus died on the cross, he brought a, re brought a, a divine reversal for humanity. He brought a divine reversal with our sin. He paid the price for our sin. He paid the price for our sickness and our infirmity. He paid the price for our prodigal. And Lord, you decree in your word in Deuteronomy 23, 5, that you turn the curse to a blessing for us. You turn the curse to a blessing for us. And so, Lord, as we're taking communion tonight, Lord, I decree that every curse is being turned to a blessing and that lives are being changed, hearts are being changed, finances are being changed, families are being changed, now is the time. I decree it now. Now is the time in Jesus' name. 
Let's partake together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, the same way that you healed my little Lucas, Lord, you went on to heal his heart. You went on to, to heal his, his, um, his heart from four different conditions. You went on to not just heal his leg, but guys, listen to this. William's children quite often um, don't even really ever run. Some of them hardly even walk because it has to do with, um, with fine motor skills and such like that. And um, not only did God restore Lucas's leg, but just a few years later when he was in school, they have Olympics for the kids in school. <laughs> and, and Lucas actually won like the 100-yard dash, the 50-yard dash, the shot put. Not only did God restore his legs to where he could run, where many William children don't run, but God made him fast. Come on, that's called the cursed being turned to a blessing. And I decree over you that whatever the enemy has tried to come against you with, God is going to turn it around for your good. That God is going to turn the curse to a blessing for you. God's going to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you can ask or think because that's exactly the kind of God that he is. And so as we take the cup tonight, he's a covenant keeping God. I want to remind you, no matter what it looks like, God's covenant and God's character is the same. God has not changed his mind about you. God has not changed the destiny over your life. You, some of you, I feel like, are facing some difficult situations. I'm telling you, he is the God of covenant that keeps covenant to a thousand generations. And tonight, I want you just to engage your faith for divine reversals. I want you to engage your faith to see massive turnaround. That's right, Marsha. Lucas, Lucas is a victor. He's, a, he's, an amazing, he's an amazing kid, nine years old now and going strong. But so let's lift up the cup, which represents the blood, because it tells us we've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives even until the death. And so, Lord, we thank you for your covenant. We thank you, Lord, that even when we don't do it right, God, you always do it right. You're a covenant keeping God. You're a God that's paid the price for us, Lord, to turn things around. Lord, maybe some parents feel like, oh, I messed up in raising my kids and that's why I've got a prodigal. Listen, listen. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. God loves to bring supernatural turnaround. God loves to surprise us. God loves to blow our minds. God loves to turn things around regardless of, of what we feel like, where we feel like we failed. And so, Lord, tonight we thank you, Lord, for this cup that, that is the blood of victory, the blood of redemption, the blood of covenant. And we thank you, Lord, that as we partake tonight, Lord, our decree is now is the time for divine reversal. In Jesus' name, let's drink together.